and welcome back everyone. And um, uh, Meredith Starts will be organizing, uh, will be moderating this discussion. Is that right, Meredith? Okay, great. But um, anyway, Jing Kai is here to present first. So Jing, take it away. Thanks, Dave. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, so today I'm going to present direct and indirect effects of financial access on SMEs. And this is a joint work with Adam Seidel. So we know that lack of credit is widely believed to be a major growth barrier for firms. But we know very little about the overall impact of credit on firm growth, accounting for both the direct effect of borrowing and the indirect effect from peer firms who might also be borrowing. And we know especially little about the impacts on small and medium enterprises. Specifically, while there's a growing number of papers looking at the impact of finance on firm outcomes, most of those papers focus on either very big firms or very small family business. Starting the impact on SMEs is important because they employ a majority of labor force in developing countries and they can be severely financial constrained because their credit demand is too big for microfinance and they normally lack the collateral for formal funding. More importantly, very few studies explore indirect effects on peer firms of any firm level uh, intervention. While understanding such effects can be key to measuring broader policy impacts on society. So our goal in this paper is to estimate both direct and indirect effects of improved access to credit on SMEs. To do this, we work with a big bank in China and we randomized access to a new loan product for SMEs both within and across local markets in China. So in this way, we created variation not only on the level of individual firms, but also on the share of peer firms who were traded. And based on this design, we seek to answer two questions. First, what are the direct and indirect effects of improved access to credit on firm growth? And second, what are the implied welfare effects? So to evaluate the welfare gains, we combine our estimates with a simple model of industry equilibrium. This paper builds on and contributes to two main literature. First, we build on the studies uh, looking at the impacts of finance on firm outcomes. For example, Banerjee and Duplo 2014 studies a policy change in India and shows that big firms in India are uh, severely financial constrained. Demar McKenzie and Udriv 2008 provides randomized grants to micro enterprises to estimate the return to capital. And there's also a line of research evaluating the impact of microfinance. So what we added in this paper is to not only look at the direct effect of credit, but also to evaluate the indirect effects from peer firms. Second, the paper also relates to some recent work uh, looking at the indirect and equilibrium effects of various type of firm level intervention. So there are very few studies on this with the following few um, exceptions. Um, Bloom, Shankerman, and Varenan 2013 studies the business dealing and spillover effects of R&D in the US. Rotenberg 2017 tests the indirect effect of government subsidies on mid-sized firms in India. And McKenzie and Pluto 2018 estimates both direct and indirect effects of business training program on micro enterprises in Kenya. So in this paper, we contribute to the literature by providing experimental evidence about credits, direct and indirect effects on SMEs. And we also provide a model-based welfare accounting. So here is the outline of my presentation. Um, firstly, I'm going to introduce the experimental design and explain the data. And then I'll go through a simple conceptual framework. Afterwards, I'm going to present the uh, empirical strategies and the results before I conclude. Okay, so firstly, let me give you some background of the loan product. Uh, in the year 2013, the rural credit cooperatives, RCC, which is one of the biggest banks in China, introduced a new loan product to SMEs in Jiangxi province, located in southeastern China. The program was targeted to clusters of firms in specialized local markets. So those are local clusters of firms specialized in some particular product categories. So for example, 
there are markets where most firms in the market um, sell furniture. And there's also a market for uh, beauty materials, shoes, etc. And the fact that the program is offered on the market level is the key innovation of the program. And there are several benefits of doing so. For example, in each market, there is a market office and a market manager who can provide rich information about local firms to the bank. And this could um, greatly save the screening and monitoring cost for RCC. It can also reduce the travel cost of the bank agents because they can visit multiple clients by coming to one market. And because of those uh, cost reductions, RCC do not require any collateral for this program. They also tried to standardize the application process and make sure to make a decision in two weeks. So those features make the loan product very attractive to um, potential borrowers. If a firm decided to borrow, the maximum amount of loan they can receive from this program is 500,000 RMB. So um, this is about uh, 80,000 US dollars. The monthly interest rates is about 0.7%. And firms pay interest every month, and they repay the principal in two years. Um, so our main intervention is to have the law officer visit traded firms monthly for a year. During each visit, they provide information about the new loan program, remind people about the benefits, and also help the firm to fill out all the complicated application forms if they decided to apply. So this can greatly um, save the application cost. So our randomization is a two-level randomization, both on the market and firm level. Firstly, we randomly assign the 78 sample markets to three groups. In 31 pure control markets, we did not treat any firm in the market. In 10 half and half markets, we treated half of the firm. And in 37 majority treated markets, we traded 80% of the firms. And in both the half and half markets and the majority traded markets, the traded firms were also randomly selected. In all those three types of markets, we surveyed half of the firm in all markets. So this gives us a total sample of 3,117 firms. So we carry out three rounds of surveys a baseline in summer 2013, right before um, the intervention, a midline in 2015, uh, and we skipped uh, 2014 to give time for firms to borrow and grow. And lastly, an end line in summer 2016. And during those surveys, we collected data on managerial characteristics, balance street information, borrowing from both formal and informal sources, and from operation. In addition to this, in the past summer, we collected an additional round of data to get information on uh, prices, firm location, um, and also balance sheet information. So this can help us um, more precisely identify the, um, evaluate the welfare gains, and also uh, look at the indirect effect, the localized uh, indirect effect. And we were able, we are also we will be also able to measure the long-term impacts of the program with these additional rounds of um, data. So this is a um, photo of one of our sample markets, and this is a market um, selling building materials. All right, so first let's look at some um, summary statistics. And um, from this table, we can see that our sample firms are on average between six and seven years old. Majority of the firms, like almost 70% are retail companies with another 25% in the service sector. The average number of employees is about nine and the average, average profit is about 500,000 RMB. Um, and around 16% of the business owners in our sample have previous working experience in the government, which we define them as politically connected. Only 25% of the firms have borrowed from a formal source before, and most um, business owners still report it's very difficult for them to get formal credit because they normally require collateral or guarantors from the government. And for those firms who did borrow from a formal source before, 
the average size of loan is about 300,000 RMB. And from the baseline to end line uh, survey, we have an attrition rate of about 14%. So uh, we can see that uh, there's no significant difference in um, all those variables between the treated and the control group, which validates our uh, recommendation. And in the next table, we provide some statistics on the market level industry structure. And so here we see that on average, around 40 firms were surveyed in each market, but because we only surveyed 50% of firms in each market, so this means the average uh, market size is around 80 firms. And then in each market, there are about four different industries. So here we define industries by the type of products that firms are selling. So for example, in a furniture market, firms that many sell bedroom furniture is defined as in a different industry from firms who many sell uh, bathroom uh, furniture. And with this definition, the average number of firms in each local industry is about nine. And we use this industry and market information to define firms' competitors. Specifically, a firm's competitor is defined as peer firms who are in the same market and same industry. So that means a firm's competitor is, are, um, can include firms in the same market and who are selling the same type of goods. And we calculated um, an inverse uh, window index of about 14, uh, suggesting that our sample firms are operating in a fairly competitive uh, environment. Um, so next, let's look at the impact of the treatment on uh, loan take up. So in column one, it shows that the treated firms are about 31.8 percentage more points more likely to receive um, loan from this new program. And this suggests a uh, large treatment effect. In column, column two, we um, break it down by uh, firm and the market type. So firstly, if you look at the coefficient of the constant, it suggests that in the pure control markets, only 3.4% firms there received uh, this, this uh, uh, loan product. And then moving to the uh, coefficient of the interaction term between untreated and 50 or 80% markets, it suggests that for control firms in the traded markets, they are around 14 percentage points more likely than pure control firms to receive the, uh, the credit. So this suggests that there can be spillover effects um, in, the, in the trading market in that the control firms there might learn about the loan opportunity from the traded firms in the, in the trading market. Hey, Jing. Yes. Um, Marcel is wondering if attrition is correlated with treatment. So other firms that get loans um, and can't repay then exit or go bankrupt. Oh, so the attrition uh, that I showed in the uh, previous table actually do not, does not include uh, uh, the uh, firms that got closed down. And I'm going to present the impact of the treatment on the likelihood of closing down later. Are there any other questions that I should clarify at this point? Not right now. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. OK, so let me show you some uh, uh, big picture pattern of the data uh, before I uh, talk about the uh, regression results. So in this figure, we plot the, uh, the density of the distribution of the uh, lock sales at baseline um, for three groups of firms, including the treated firms, the uh, control firms in trading markets and the control firms in the, in the pure control markets. So in baseline, you can see that the, the uh, distribution is very similar, uh, which uh, again validates our recommendation. And then three years later, we can see that the distribution of sales, lock sales for the traded firms, which is represented by the um, blue curve, moved to the right. So this suggests a positive uh, direct effect. And more interestingly, we see that the red line, which indicates the control firms in trading market moved to the left of the green line, which is the um, untraded firms in the, uh, the control firms in control markets. And this suggests a negative uh, indirect effect. 
And this negative indirect effect could be uh, driven by uh, things like business dealing, like the uh, borrower firms who got the credits uh, may be able to um, uh, reduce their price or uh, provide better customer services, which can attract customers away from um, their competitors. But remember that the indirect effect can be either positive or negative in our case. It can be positive because of the information diffusion effect that I showed in the long take up table, but it can be also negative because of business dealing. So for now, we're going to focus on the negative business dealing effect, and we're going to bring back the positive information diffusion effect towards the end when we do the IV estimation and welfare calculation. So uh, let me pause here for five minutes um, for questions before I move on to the theory and estimations. Great. So uh, I think Christina Orban had a question. Uh, Leslie, is Christina able to ask it? Yeah, she should be joining us as a panelist now. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my question was related to your first regression table, which showed, um, if I remember correctly, that the more intensively treated um, areas had actually a lower take up on average of the loan relative to the, um, to the less intensively treated market. So I was wondering whether you will talk about why that might be the case. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, the, the coefficients here are not statistically uh, different between those two I types think. of markets. Um, but um, the reason could be that if a um, sufficiently um, um, big share of firms are traded in a market, like 50%, then it's already enough for the information to get diffused. So that could be one uh, potential explanation. No, that, that makes a lot of sense, but you would still expect for information to diffuse more, right? Um, if you if you treat more more firms, but I understand they are not statistically different. So mm -hmm. thanks for thanks for answering. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Do you have other questions at this point? Oh, Eric, Meredith, can I? Sorry, I, I'm not able to, as a co host or panelist, I'm not sure I'm able to write in the QA box. Um, are you going to talk about, Jing, the, the, the fact that you'd expect these the negative indirect effects to be very different based on whether they're competing directly against each other or not? Uh, whether, like the. Like whether are they selling the same stuff or, or no, you'd expect. Yes. Very, yes so, yeah. so, yeah, I'm going to um, estimate the, the indirect effect from com uh, competitors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Other questions? One quick comment. I mean, I find it interesting that the dispersion of growth increases significantly for the treated firms. I guess you're going to discuss that later on. Sorry, what? what uh, the dispersion of growth also increases by the for the treated firms. The in in the in this in the when you show the the distributions. Uh huh. It's also, I guess it's also true that the dispersion of growth, both oh. positive and negative. Uh, you're going to comment on that later, wait. I find it an interesting result. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to talk about that later. Perfect. Jing, I had one question about the previous slide with information spillovers. So you, uh -huh. you mentioned in the design that one of the benefits was also that the lender could have like an office in the market and have a loan officer around. So I guess I'm wondering, can we, should we interpret this as information spillovers or was there kind of variation in whether there was an office or how much time the loan officer was spending around that might also? Oh, so actually uh, uh, the loan officer, they, they don't have an office in the market, but uh, even like before the programs of, was offered, um, there's uh, each market, there's a market office who is responsible of like, um, uh, uh, like uh, some administrative stuff of the of the local firms, um, and we uh, we actually in the in the survey we asked firms where did you heard about the opportunity uh, of this law, and among the um, uh, control firms in the trading market, in most cases we see that they say I heard about it from a firm from another firm in in the in the market, yeah. 
So, and, and for the loan officer, we, uh, we give them a list of the firms that they should visit and ask them like, do not visit the uh, control firms who are not on the list. Okay. David? Sorry, just to be clear, they, they had an office even in the control market where you treated zero? Yes. It's a, and, 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 and that guy was told to go in every day, but he wasn't allowed to do anything ever? No. So in, the, um, in all those uh, offices, there's no bank agent. Um, so, so it's just uh, like a um, uh, uh, market officer uh, who, can, who is uh, responsible of, for example, registration of a new registration of firms in the, in the, in the market. And also they do uh, like um, uh, uh, annual check of those uh, firms to see like, uh, for example, how many employees do they have? What's the main product they're selling? Um, so this is not related with the bank. Um, the bank agent, they need to go to the market and visit their clients. And if they want to get more information about the firm, they can ask the bank officer. So that means in the control markets, even if there is a office, um, is uh, the the bank agent to not go there? I see. I thought I interpreted Meredith's comment as if you if you look at the people who are in the true control, not only do they have less information, but also it's really hard for them to get a loan. There isn't some guy walking around every day who they can go and get forms from, and who's going to be able to come around to their 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 booth very quickly. Uh, instead, there's a big supply difference as well. Yeah, but if those uh, pure control firms heard about this opportunity from other sources, they are also eligible to apply. Yeah. So it might be it might be interesting to look at the like uh, difference between heard about the loan and took took it up, in case there's sort of a distinction between they heard about it from their neighbors, but they were also less likely to take it up because sort of the access part was. Yeah, I can certainly uh, uh, compare the approval rates uh, between the uh, traded and control markets. But we, we also looked at the um, loan application as outcome for the same table and the pattern looks very similar. Great, so should we, um, should we move on? And then uh, I think everybody's aware, but we'll have 10 minutes for discussion and questions at the end. And if you have more clarifying questions, just put them in the Q&A during the talk. Sure. Um, so uh, in order to guide our um, uh, uh, empirical estimation and welfare analysis, uh, here we introduce a very simple uh, conceptual framework. So this is basically a Mali style model with nasty CES in that monopolistically competitive firms are organized in local markets. Goods purchased in a market can be aggregated to a competitive good QM and customers have preference over differentiated goods in, in each market. And we assume that the uh, uh, sigma, which is the elasticity of substitution uh, within market, is bigger than theta, which is the elasticity of substitution across markets. Or in other words, we are assuming that goods are more substitutable within than across markets. We further assume that firms have constant return to scale, they produce with labor, face exogenous wage, and differ in productivity. Then we consider a treatment that increases a firm productivity by a factor gamma. And, or you can also conceptualize this as uh, improvements in um, product quality, reduction in price, et cetera. And imagine if we have the treatment introduced to a share SM of firms in a market. Then to a first order approximation, we can write the impact of this treatment on the revenue of a firm I in the following way. So the impact is composed of two items. The first item is the direct effect. And the intuition is that if a firm received these additional credits, they will be able to improve productivity or uh, reduce prices. And this is going to uh, attract more uh, customers. And the second term is the indirect effect. And the story can be similar. If more of your competitors receive uh, uh, the, the credit, then the indirect effect is uh, stronger because more of those competitors may steal customers away from your business. So to estimate both the direct and indirect effects of the treatment on firm outcomes, here is the uh, specification we use. So in this uh, equation, 
The outcome YIT includes outcome variables such as firm sales, uh, profits, employment, etc. And on the right hand side, post is an indicator for the midline or endline survey. Treatment indicates whether a firm received the intervention. And post uh, and share of competitors treated because the share of peer firms located in the same uh, market and who are selling the same product who, that were treated. And we always control for um, uh, firm fixed effect in the regression and we cluster send errors um, to the market level. So here there are two coefficients of interest. The first one is beta, which measures the direct effect of the treatment. And the other one is delta, which represents the indirect effects of competitors' treatment. So the first table um, presents the impact of the, uh, on, on, on main firm outcomes. So let's look at column one first. So the result here shows that from the baseline to the end line survey, um, uh, firms in the pure control market experienced a sales growth of about 3.7%. And receiving the treatment can generate an additional 10% growth in sales. And this suggests a large direct effect of borrowing. Um, however, there is also a very big and negative uh, indirect effect. And the coefficients of the interaction between post and share of competitors traded indicates that if your, all of your competitors were traded in the market, then this negative indirect effect almost offset the positive direct effect. And we observe a similar uh, pattern of results on profits, uh, employment, uh, wage. The impact on fixed assets and uh, lot of materials uh, is also similar, but less uh, significant. In the last column, we look at the impact on the likelihood for uh, firms to close down. And we see that the treated firms are less likely to, uh, to close down. Um, but um, there's the indirect effect on uh, shutting down is not significant. So basically this table suggests that the treatment seems to have a large and positive direct, but at the same time, a big and negative indirect effect on main firm outcomes. Um, so to further validate our results and also to more fully explore the nature of the direct and indirect effects, here we provide some specification checks. So the first analysis we do is uh, like a placebo test in which we estimate the, uh, both the direct and indirect effects again, but only using the baseline data. And we are not expected to, to see any impacts there. So the results here uh, are, are shows that there's no, no effects of, uh, of borrowing or like um, from competitors at the baseline. And this confirms both our within and across market recommendations. In the uh, second specification check, we look at the heterogeneity of the indirect effect by treatment. So here we decompose the term post, multiply share of competitors treated, to uh, treated or uh, control firms. And uh, from this table, we see that for both treated and uh, control firms, it seems to experience a negative um, spillover effect uh, from peer firms. But the magnitude of the coefficient for the control firms is bigger than that of the treated firms. But we don't have enough power to um, separately identify those uh, uh, two effects. So in general, when we bring in this heterogeneity, the, um, the uh, pattern of the results are similar, um, but we don't have enough power to estimate all those um, three effects. And then we, um, in, in, in addition to the uh, indirect effects from competitors, there can be also indirect effects from non-competitors. So in this table, we uh, separately look at the indirect effect from competitors and that from non-competitors. And the results here shows that the uh, indirect effect from non-competitors is not significant. And this suggests that the, it is the competitors that is mainly driving the indirect effects. 
that uh, we are currently cleaning up the uh, location information of the firms, and then we will be able to do a more uh, precise estimation of this um, table. So for example, we can look at like um, for a given firm, uh, we, we have their neighbors uh, defined, and we can estimate a more localized uh, indirect effects from competitors and non-competitors. And then we look at the impact of the intervention on some intermediate outcomes that might have contributed to the uh, pattern of uh, uh, effects that we see. So in this table, we present impact on uh, business outcomes. Um, so column one and two shows that where there's no impact on the number of uh, uh, um, uh, suppliers, there is a big impact on clients. Specifically, the traded um, firms are uh, attracting more clients, but at the same time, there's, um, uh, again, a negative business dealing effect observed here. So this suggests that there seems to be a, like a reallocation of, um, of demand within the uh, markets across different firms. So in order to help you understand this effect, in columns three to five, we estimate the impact on some specific uh, business activities. So here we can see that the traded firms are more likely to renovate their stores. They are also more likely to introduce more new products to improve the um, product diversification. And they're also spending more on the advertisement cost. So those uh, evidence suggests that the traded firms seems to attract clients by offering better services uh, to customers. And this is uh, consistent with our uh, model's logic on uh, business thing. At the same time, there's no evidence of impact on the markup or on rents. In the next table, we look at the impact on uh, financial and uh, other outcomes. So firstly, in, uh, from columns one to three, we see that where uh, traded firms are borrowing, uh, are more likely to borrow from these uh, additional uh, uh, credit sources. It does not crowd out their existing loans because we don't see any reduction in the likelihood of borrowing from other sources or the amount of, uh, of other loans. So this suggests that those firms are credit constrained. In columns four and five, we see that the traded firms are more likely to offer uh, trade credit uh, uh, to their clients and also from their uh, suppliers. So this is another evidence that the traded firms are uh, seems to like uh, attract uh, customers by providing, uh, for example, trade credit and as another example of better services. And in the last column, we look at an indicator of misreporting because one concern could be that the, our results can be driven by a experimental demand effect in that the traded firms may think they are expected to perform better. So they would be more likely to over-report um, uh, their performance data. So in order to measure misreporting um, during the survey, we firstly ask uh, firms to self-report their uh, sales. And then we, uh, after the survey, we ask them to show us the book value of sales. And we define misreporting as the difference between those two uh, sales variables. And here we don't see any impact of the uh, uh, treatment on misreporting. Um, and in order to uh, uh, um, further help us understand like what is driving this um, uh, within market reallocation of, uh, of clients, um, we are currently looking at the price data and marketing strategies that firms used to see like uh, firms were able to like uh, reduce uh, prices or offer uh, coupons to, uh, to attract more customers. In the next table, uh, we look at the dynamics of the effect um, to see like whether the, persist the effect was persistent between the midline and end line survey. And we, here we see that there's no significant reduction in, uh, in the effect towards the, um, the end of the study. Okay, so um, then this table presents the heterogeneity effects. And here we look at three types of heterogeneity 
um, by firm size, which is uh, measured uh, uh, by the uh, log employment, the education level of education of business owner, and the political whether the business owner has political connection. So uh, most of those uh, uh, results here are just uh, suggestive because uh, they, are, they are not uh, uh, significant. But basically the, the message is that it seems like, like um, suggestive evidence that uh, firms that were bigger uh, or with uh, better educated business owners or uh, business owners who do not have political connection seems to have benefit, benefited more. From the, from the program. So lastly, we, we look at the market outcomes by, um, and we ag by aggregating the uh, 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 firm level outcomes to the market level, and then we run a market level regression. So columns one and two shows that there's insignificant effect uh, of the uh, treatment on uh, both sales and a profit. However, there are significant impacts on um, the market level uh, firm shutdown rate, renovation rates, or product uh, introductory, a new product introductory rate. So this suggests that this um, trading a subset of firms in the market uh, seems to generate its uh, um, reallocation of demand across firms, but this does not uh, lead to significant or, or big gains in uh, sales or profits at the market level. However, there are market-wide uh, gains in firm survival, renovation, and um, product introduction. Um, all right, so lastly, let me uh, talk about the, uh, the IV estimation and the welfare calculation. So remember that we mentioned uh, the indirect effect can be both can be either positive and negative. So here we now bring back this uh, information diffusion effect that can generate the positive um, uh, indirect effect, and we estimate those three effects in the same framework. So here is the regression that we use. Again, yi measures the outcome indicators of a firm i. On the right-hand side, EI is a dummy variable equaling to one if firm I borrowed or like received the loan from the program. And ZI is the share of uh, competitors that borrowed. So we instrument EI by the randomly assigned treatment status and we instrument ZI using the share of uh, um, competitors that were, that were traded. And a key assumption here is that we assume the impact of borrowing by traded and the control firms are the same. And the next table presents the IV results. And basically the pattern is the same as before. We uh, see a, a, a big and a positive direct effect of borrowing and uh, negative and uh, uh, significant ne uh, uh, indirect effect from competitors. Then we use the IV estimates to do a welfare calculation. So here's how we calculate the welfare effects. Um, suppose that we, we treat a share S of uh, markets, and this is going to yield a random share of uh, ZD traded borrowers and ZU untraded uh, borrowers. So the parameter phi here is reflects the information um, diffusion among traded markets. Then the welfare gain from trading a share S of a firm um, uh, as a, a share of market revenue can be written by the following three uh, components. And in, those, uh, uh, in this equation, beta and delta are the IV estimates. So the first term is the producer surplus, which equals the, uh, the net gain of, of profit uh, uh, and which equals the sum of direct and indirect profit effects. So here, beta measures the direct effect and delta measures the indirect effect. The second term is consumer uh, surplus. Um, so here, beta divided by sigma minus one uh, 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 is a, a function of uh, the productivity gain gamma. And we can think about as, uh, as that uh, firms were able to 
reduce prices or uh, uh, provide better services. And this term reflects the reduction in the cost of purchasing the current bundle. And the last term measures a wafer gain from spillover, which equals any additional producer and consumer surplus from information diffusion. So for a given um, uh, uh, sigma, we can uh, calculate all terms from, the, from our estimates. Um, so we consider two levels of sigma here. One is six, which equals the sales to profit ratio in our data. And the other one is a more conservative uh, value, which is uh, uh, 11. And we consider two scenarios here. One is to treat all firms in the market, and the other is to treat 50% of firms in the market. So let's look at panel A first, where we assume that sigma equals six. So if we treat all firms in the market, then it can generate a producer surplus of around 1.2 percent of the profit and the dollar equivalence is about 900 and the consumer surplus equals about 19.7 percent of the profit so the total welfare again is about 20 percent of the profit however if we treat 50 percent of firms then those uh, the pro both producer and consumer surplus reduced to a half but there are some additional gain from spillover which equals 3.9% of the profit. And if we um, uh, use a different value of sigma, like 11, then um, those estimates are in general smaller, but the, the pattern is, uh, is similar. So basically this table tells us um, there's the producer surplus is very small. And this is mainly because the negative indirect effect driven by competitors almost offset the uh, positive direct effect of borrowing. However, we do see large gains in consumer surplus, even with conservative values of um, sigma. And this is because in, in our context, the direct effects of the treatment is large, meaning that consumers value the changes made uh, by those uh, 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 traded firms. And, uh, that is why we see a big um, uh, gain in uh, consumer surplus. So in addition to this, we also estimate the return on capital and we separately estimate the private and social return to capital. And for simplicity here, we assume that we uh, treat all firms in the market so that there's no um, uh, diffusion effect. So the private uh, return is measured by the, uh, 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 the direct effect on profit normalized by the size of loan. And we calculated a private return of 82%, which uh, lies in between the current estimates, like uh, Banerjee Duflo 2014 estimate a private return of 105%, and the more at all 2008 as, uh, give us an estimate of uh, 60%. In the social, social return, we um, can also consider the impact on uh, from competitors and on consumers. So we uh, minus the business dealing effect from the private return and add back the consumer surplus. And we estimated uh, a social return of uh, 114% when sigma equals six and 60% when sigma equals um, uh, 11. And the social return is mainly driven by the consumer surplus because the private return and business dealing effect almost offsets each other. Okay, so um, then let me conclude. So in this paper, we estimate the impact of improved access to finance on small and medium enterprises. So we find a very big and positive direct effect of borrowing but at the same time, also a large and negative business selling effect and a positive information diffusion effect. And the model-based account uh, of direct and indirect effect on firms and consumers um, also implies sizable welfare gains. Um, so let me stop here and um, see whether there's any questions. Great, thanks very much, Jing. Um, Gia, I think you had a question in the chat. Are you able to unmute yourself? 
Yes, hi, hi, Jane. Uh, so I just have a clarification question. So the share of competitor uh, treated, so that is defined based on the product category that they're selling, right? So I think yeah. that in the market, on average, there are about 80 firms and selling nine products. So there are about like, on average, 10 competitors. Um, for each firm, so I'm just, maybe I missed this. Have you shown us the sort of the distribution of that in the, the share of companies are treated? How is that, you know, the variation of that variable? Uh, so actually, the um, uh, the average market size is eighty, and the average number of firms in our industry uh, is about is about eighteen. Um, because in the table that, that that reflects the number of firms that we surveyed, but we surveyed half of them. Uh, uh, firms in each market. And we, we, we have not shown the distribution, but I think that's a very good point. We should definitely look at that. Yeah, a uh, related question. I think it would be also nice to see the results, you know, the, the results on profits uh, using the same specification as you've shown for the take up table. Uh, you know, this fully saturated, just uh -huh. the experimental arms, there are five arms. It'll be just nice to, to see that as well. Sure, we'll do that. Before you move on to this, you know, uh, this finer level of variation that you have collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can definitely look at that. Great. John, you had a question? Um, yeah, let me, can I shut the video on or? Yeah. Sure, go for it. Can you see me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Hey. Oh, yeah. Anyway, it's just a fantastic laboratory and way, you know, experimental design to answer some really interesting questions. Um, so I guess my just even just your first slide, I was wondering because you have this you have this marginal effect on firms for productivity, and then the spillover effect, which is from business dealing, which I guess you anticipated in your estimates because that business dealing effect is going to show up as consumer surplus, right? Because that's you know hurting all the firms but benefiting consumers. But I guess what I was wondering um, is there kind of an optimal level of treatment, right? Because, hmm. and you kind of you kind of show that that with you treat half the firms, actually you kind of get more, you get a higher percentage of benefit than um, than if you treat all the firms, right? But is there from those estimates, since those two effects are almost countering each other out, like is is there a way to think about like an optimal level of treatment within one of these markets? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I think it would be super interesting to kind of um, uh, uh, vary. Uh, the uh, intensity of treatment on the market level to see like what's the optimal level uh, of, of treatment. But in our case, uh, because we, we have a limited number of markets, we only have 70, uh, 78 markets. So we are only able to offer two levels of um, treatment. So I guess in our case, uh, we, we cannot test like what is the optimal level of treatment, but I, I think that is, uh, uh, very interesting and important question for future research. Right. I mean, I think even just from your your back your back of the envelope estimates, right? You could if you took them if you took the model really seriously, you could even kind of make an mm. objection, right? Um, like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. we can we can try to right. see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mario. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, great presentation. I, I was just wondering if there is any uh, interesting heterogeneity by sector. Uh, for example, if business dealing is higher in sectors where products are more homogeneous or less differentiated, and whether that can tell you something about yeah, the nature of, of, the, of the gains in the spillovers. For example, if it's mostly just prices being lower, maybe you know, it's, um, you should, we should see more of these effects in more homogeneous uh, kind of mm -hmm. sectors. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a good point. So yeah, we have not looked at it so far, but uh, we, sh we, we, can, we can look at the test the heterogeneity by uh, different industries. Thanks. I think we have a question from Edinson. Are you promoted yet? Yes, hi, uh, good presentation. Um, I am, I am like it so much. So, but in, in this case, I have a question related with the variables. I mean, do you consider other variables such as owner for education or the education in financial tools? So can you repeat that? Yeah, I was wondering if you consider some other variables uh, related with, uh, for example, education about um, financial tools according to oh. the owners. Oh, so you mean like a financial education of financial literacy of business owners? Yeah, exactly, exactly, yes. 
Yeah, so we don't have direct questions in the survey testing their level of literacy, but we do have questions on like um, whether they have uh, whether they have uh, uh, um, investment in the stock market or like whether they have saving accounts, et cetera. Um, maybe we can also look at the, and if there's any, any heterogeneity by that. Yes, exactly. This is my wonder because uh, maybe it's, it's related with uh, how to dynamic about that they consider, you know, the open variables. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, Meredith. Could I also uh, have a question? Uh, Jane, it's, yeah, it's it's very really nice um, result here. I I'm I'm actually quite interested in your result that it seems like the treated firms is a little bit more insulated from the uh, competition compared with the uh, um, untreated firms in your result. I've been wondering, if you have an insight about you know what's been kind of the explanation for that because your your model is mostly a horizontal model where this bunch of symmetric substitution built in, which yeah. I think about, you know, given your result, maybe there's a, also a vertical element there, you know, that, that you know, if, if, if I were treated, I was, I was improving my, you know, I'm doing renovation and kind of move up the ladder such that that makes me kind of a little bit more insulated. So, so wonder, you know, if there's any such kind of a um, impact there, which you could build into your model modeling framework. And also a related question is, when you talk about consumer surplus, I was a little bit lost there um, in terms of what are the sources of the consumer surplus in your current uh, world. Is that mostly coming from more intense competition being driving down the overall price or there's some other elements there? So these are kind of two related questions. Um, thanks Daniel for the uh, excellent questions. Uh, so um, for your um, first question, yes. So, so we think the reason of why the treated firms, for treated firms, the indirect effect is smaller is because they themselves received the treatment. So they were able to borrow and, and, and make changes for, uh, for their stores. So that is why like compared with control firms who are less likely to, to get these additional credits, the indirect effect is smaller. And uh, we are actually currently re revising the, uh, the model to uh, incorporate that, that, that feature. Um, and th for the second question, uh, the, so for now, uh, because we, we, we have not finished the uh, analysis which incorporates the price um, data yet. So, uh, so, so for now, the, the uh, consumer surplus um, comes from the, the we, we expect that it comes from, from the fact that the firms might change the, uh, uh, the, the prices to attract more uh, customers. Um, but it's, uh, so, so the country result is implied from the, from the, um, from the model because the, uh, we, we, we kind of model the gain of the uh, treatment as productivity improvement, which is reflected in the, uh, the profit gains and we uh, explain the big consumer supplies uh, by the reason that like, because we see very big pr profit gains on the firm level. So it must be like the firm did something good to attract those firm, uh, the customers there. But um, uh, without the price data, we cannot like, um, I mean, with the price data, we can more precisely uh, um, explain like uh, where does the consumer supplies come from. Questions? Uh, so, oh, sorry. Ahead, no, I was curious about you can comment on the, uh, the effects on the dispersion of firm growth. Oh, right. Yeah. I so I just. Uh, yeah, it turns out that we don't have uh, the results there. Uh, uh, so, so you mean like why the, uh, the distribution of sales of traded firms is more. Yeah, so if, if I, I guess in the histogram as well was very, and the density that was very prominent, but I don't know if there's anything that you can. Yeah, so I think that, the, yeah, the reason could be like as uh, uh, the, the traded firms are receiving this uh, additional amount of money. So they might in, invest on like uh, riskier um, projects. So that could be one reason of why the, the uh, is that something that you, you you are able to explore in the model in your further um, research? 
Yes, maybe we can. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll think about how to add that in the model. Pete, you had something? Yeah, I was still trying to understand, you know, whether your estimate already takes into account that there might be a return on on similar investments for other firms. But, but to be concrete, let's think about the outside sector. Uh -huh. Suppose the outside sector also had 100% return on these intangible investments. So is there a gain? I mean, I presume these firms are really high rates of return, these 100% relative to a lot of their firms who are getting capital at the margin or making intangible investments. So I, I think there's some element of misallocation in the initial allocation, and this is improving on it, but I can't quite see whether that's already incorporated in your estimate fully. So we are not currently estimating like a misallocation, um, but I think that's a very interesting uh, question to, to look at. And currently we are doing analysis, including like um, uh, try to see what kind of, uh, whether there's any, um, what kind of uh, firm are more likely to borrow and uh, whether there's any difference in the characteristics of borrowers between the, the, the treated versus uh, um, uh, control, control firms or control markets. Yeah, and we, we are hoping that we can say something about misallocation. Great. So Thanks. just to follow just to follow up on that, I think you showed that at baseline, you know, a quarter of uh -huh. firms have have um, borrowed previously. And so yeah. I, I have a similar sense of trying to trying to understand sort of where in the um, productivity distribution are those firms that are able uh -huh. to borrow pre-treatment and where are the firms that are then responding to your treatment. And the, the other comment that I had was when I look at the post dummies, a lot, I mean, a lot of the post dummies seem to suggest that these firms are expanding, their profits are rising in the, in the control group. So this is very much sort of a growing market. And I, I wondered whether you have some markets which are actually declining and you can uh -huh. say something more about the injection of credit into, you know, at different phases of the business cycle that would theory predict that the impacts would be the same in a growing market as in a declining market. I guess uh, that relates that which firms are most credit constrained um, mm -hmm. to begin with. I just wanted to get a better sense of sort of that, yeah, the degree of misallocation that exists pre-treatment. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah, thanks Imran for those uh, great points. So firstly, we can uh, definitely look at like whether, um, whether there's any heterogeneity by them, like whether those firms were able to get loans from uh, formal sources even before the, the, the treatment. And um, sorry, what's your second point? The the, the second point was that it, on average, it seems that these firms are growing in the control group. Oh, the right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. So we can right. So we mm -hmm. so we we can we can look at like a um, separate. Maybe we can group uh, markets to like a declining or growing uh, markets, and then we can test the heterogeneity by that. I guess, Jing, a, a related question that may be beyond what you can answer, right, is sort of spillovers across markets. If there's, if there's kind of a, a net um, influx of spending in markets that are more heavily treated, where is that coming from? And, could, you know, sort of how does that affect what we think about the welfare impact? Yeah, so uh, actually in my context, there's very limited spillover across markets because uh, so we have about 10 counties in the, in the sample, but normally like in, in one county, there's only one like a furniture market or one building materials market. So in our context, there's not really uh, much spillover across markets. Yeah, I guess I was thinking about it not so much as like an identification concern, but a sort of welfare statement. If, if, if this is sort of consumers reallocating their spending towards something uh -huh. that's now more attractive to them, that's mm -hmm. where's that coming from? I see. Yeah, well, we'll definitely think about that. Anyway, I'm sorry. I've now I've now uh, done a bad moderator thing and pushed us one minute <laughs> over time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over now to um, Cecile in the next session. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks everyone for the great set of comments. Thanks, Jing. Thanks, Meredith, and thanks, uh, Jing.